Hi everyone, my name is Evil Sasha. Welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you a really exciting video, something that I've been working on really hard. I was really happy when this trend started and I watched all the other videos and it was really fun and entertaining and also educational when I watched other people recreate uh, video tutorials by famous uh, YouTubers and I thought that this was a very good trend for me to hop on and although it's at this point almost over I'm still doing it because I put a lot of work in this video and I'm really proud of it and I hope that somebody out there will appreciate it. Uh, the thing is, uh, I specifically wanted to do a Glam and Gore tutorial because actually several years ago I started doing SFX makeup thanks to Mikey's channel and one of the first makeup looks I ever did was based entirely on her tutorial and I will put some pictures on the screen right now and I'm still really proud of that first experience and it was all thanks to her that I got inspired to start doing SFX makeup and learning it and uh, yeah, I'm really thankful to her so I was lucky to grab a really cool model, my friend Kate, who agreed to model for me and I decided that a great way to challenge myself would be not only to do one tutorial in one video, but do two, because that's how I roll apparently and why make things easy for yourself, right? So I decided to follow the Lana Del Rey tutorial, both parts, and this is what happened. I'm going to be doing a voiceover because my model does not speak English and I thought it would be really confusing and um, unnecessary to switch back and forth between Russian and English, so I hope that's okay with you. And um, let's jump in. So I start contouring the face by following the tutorial as closely as possible. So for the contouring, I'm taking a dark brown cream concealer. I'm choosing this because it best replicates what an actual shadow on my skin would look like. We're not going for pretty or natural or wearable here. We're doing this with the aim of transforming our facial features into someone else's. Therefore, the best choice is to pick a realistic color to replicate a shadow. Shadows are generally a darker color of the surface that they're on and a little more muted or desaturated. For the contouring itself, I'm starting with the nose and her nose is very, very different from mine. It's almost the opposite in a lot of ways. Therefore, I'm going to need heavy contouring to get the shadows to be a believable version of Lana's nose. You might not need to do it as heavily as I do if your nose is already more similar to hers. At this point, my model and I were laughing because we were basically drawing a penis on her nose. And funnily enough, her nose was quite similar to Mikey's, so we ended up doing it quite closely to the tutorial exactly what you need to do on your nose to make it look like hers, but I can point out to you the features of her nose that you need to aim for. For example, the bridge of her nose is very wide and then her nose tapers down to almost a point at the tip. Mine is almost the exact opposite where the bridge of the nose starts really narrow and it gets wider as it goes down and I have a bulbous tip that isn't quite pointed up the way that hers is. Hers almost looks triangular. Her nose is also pretty short for her face. My nose is rather long, so I am putting concealer underneath of my nose, almost all the way up into the center of the tip of my nose, and that creates the illusion that it's shorter. She also has a split in her nose, which is why I'm accentuating the split in mine. And because her nose kind of points up a little bit, that's why I'm putting that line above the tip of the nose. Lastly, her nose is wide at the nostrils compared to the tip, so I am putting lines on the side of my nostrils and extending them up past them a bit because that really sells the illusion that the tip is much thinner than the rest of the nose, unlike my natural nose. I also heavily shade the inside corners of my eyes and crease because she has deep set eyes that are a little closer together than mine. So doing this will sell that illusion that they are closer together and deeper.
Make sure after you've laid all this out or as you go that you're blending. Yes, there was a lot of blending involved. Along with contouring, you obviously want to highlight. And this is the same basic principle as contouring, just using light in opposite ways. I'm using a really light, almost white concealer to highlight the bridge of my nose since mine is sunken in and hers is not. I'm using it to clean up the lines on the edge of the nose because hers is very straight and mine is not. I'm also using it in the inner corners of the eyes because her eyes are very round and we really want to open them up. I'm using it to clean up the crease and to also make that more round. And I will also be using it later on the tip of the nose to further refine that pointed tip that she has. Throughout this contour and highlighting process, you're probably going to find yourself going back and forth quite a bit. I went back with contour underneath of the eyes as another way to make the eyes look more round. And then I also decided to contour the side of my face to try to match the shape of her face. I have a heart-shaped face and she has more of an oval-shaped face, so I was literally contouring out the sides of my face that add that extra width in the jaw. You obviously do not have to do this part if you don't want to, and it looks pretty darn weird up close because it's kind of like a 5 o'clock shadow, but from the front, it does slim the face. Extreme contouring kind of works like that, where it looks best from one angle and it looks a little strange from any other. Also, I totally hadn't realized this until I was forced to study Lana Del Rey's face for this. Not that I'm complaining, but she has a slight cleft chin also, so I contoured the chin a tiny bit. At least for me, the most important part to pull off this look was to get her nose right, so I spent extra time going back on that and really using the highlight to get the perfect shape. I essentially found that what works best is two lines down either side of the tip of the nose, a tiny bit above it, and then two straight lines going down at an angle, going off the sides of the nostril. That gives you kind of that upward triangular shape that she has. But again, this might not work exactly the same for you on your nose. After that, it was time to really just go in with a bunch of eyeshadows and set everything that was already there. I used dark brown shadows to go over most of the contour, keeping the crease the darkest. Also to go underneath of the lower lash line. Don't forget to line your eyes with a white pencil because she's got big doughy eyes and she's often seen wearing white in the waterline as it is. That is one attractive face you're making, Mikey. I am setting my lids and the inner corners of my eyes with a matte white eyeshadow. And then lastly, she does her eyeliner a lot of different ways, but I'm doing a small wing all the way across the top just to keep the eyes looking big and, again, round. Add some mascara and false eyelashes and the Lana eyes are done. You are almost as dreamy as her. There's one important, famous feature left. The lips. I'm starting out by contouring and highlighting the cupid's bow area because that can actually help give the lips the appearance of being more full and pouty. So at this point we discovered that uh, we did not have working lip pencils, so I just gave up and uh, completely filled in the lips with a Mount lipstick. To give the appearance of fullness, I'm going to be lining my bottom lip as normal and overlining the top lip in the outer corners. This is kind of similar to the pointed lip tutorial that I did a while back, only obviously way less pointy and exaggerated. This might change depending on your lip shape and size, but for me, I'm lacking the fullness in the upper lip that she has, whereas I'm fine on the lower lip. I'm using that pencil to fill in the lip completely, but you can use any lipstick that you think would go well with the lip liner. Finally, I would recommend putting a gloss on top of all of that, because the shine from glosses will make your lips appear fuller. I almost forgot about blush. Don't forget the blush. 
okay, we forgot the blush. It was way past midnight at that point, and my friend really wanted to go home, and we were both really just tired and <laughs> we wanted to be done. Um, so, yeah. Sorry about that. Forgive us, Lana Del Rey, and please, Mikey, forgive us. We forgot the blush and the birthmark. So, our Lana turned out a little bit pale, but I think it still turned out pretty good. part of the tutorial, things went a bit wrong. <laughs> so I tried following Mikey's gelatin tutorial several times, but I'm not sure what I did wrong, even though I measured everything and used a kitchen scale to make sure all the measurements were correct. But every time the gelatin came out really, really thick and it solidified really fast, uh, way before it um, cooled down enough to be safe to use on the model and I did it I think three times and it ended up the same way every time so we were getting really really desperate at this point and we didn't know what to do um, so what we came up with uh, eventually was we created basically um, prosthetics out of the um, gelatin. What we did is we um, took a plate like this and we put the gelatin on it and just pulled it apart and ripped it and deformed it in different ways and created several chunks of gelatin, just weird looking flaps like that. Um, and then I uh, glued them onto my model's face, like um, prosthetics, and then followed Mikey's tutorial closely after that. But that was one really big um, kind of deviation from the tutorial that we had to take due to technical difficulties. So sorry for that, and I hope you understand, and on to the tutorial. Cover yourself in a cape or a plastic bag or take your clothes off first. Whatever works for you. Because it's going to get stuck to whatever you're wearing. Once the gelatin is hot, you want to first of all be really careful and maybe spend some time dancing. Because if you put this stuff on your face straight out of the microwave, you're going to burn yourself. Please check it with your finger first. If it's too hot for your hand, it's definitely going to be too hot for the sensitive skin on your face. I am warning you. Be careful. Don't eat it. So when you're working at the top of your face for this, you want to keep your head tilted far forward so that you're not risking this dripping down into your eyes. Makes sense, right? Don't forget to do it though. And then I'm basically just laying it down all over my face in big globs and I am patting it with a popsicle stick, tongue depressor, whatever it is you want to use, as it gets tacky and it gives it a weird texture. You want to build this up randomly, you want to poke holes in it, you want to make it uneven because we don't want a smooth surface in the end, we want stuff with a lot of craters and gross stringy skin things. I first saw Beauty by Brig do this gelatin covered zombie face. You should check her out because she's awesome. And I think it is one of the cheapest and easiest ways to get a really gnarly messed up zombie face. I was going for really bulbousy, deformed, and just utterly unrecognizable. So it's a good thing that we have our flower crown and Lana outfit to identify ourselves. 
Cut off any excess that's dripped down off of your face. That sounds really lovely. And then you're going to do the same thing down your neck. When you're all done, you can throw it back in your little Tupperware bin and recycle it for the next zombie. Much like Glam Lana, this is all going to be about highlighting and contouring now, believe it or not. I'm taking a foundation to match my skin and I'm going to lay that all over the top areas of the gelatin and that's really going to show us what textures we're working with in terms of where the crevasses are and where all the like pustules are and then stuff. That's the highlight part. Now for the contouring we're going to put dark colors in deep places. Starting with the eye sockets, which are the most obvious and easy to do. I didn't cover my eyelids completely at first, but I ended up covering the whole eye socket in black eventually anyway. Then everywhere else, I'm just going to start putting dark brown colors in the deepest places of the gelatin. I'm using aqua paints to do this, which are water activated paints. You can also use alcohol activated paints, cream paints, or anything that you find works. I prefer using alcohol or water activated paints on this kind of thing because using the water or alcohol as your medium to thin out the paint is a great way to have it sink into the deepest parts of the mask rather than having to stick your brush in every little spot. Much like Glam Lana highlighting and contouring, you're going to be going back and forth with this probably a few times as well. After I've covered the deep areas in dark paint, I'm going back in with my highlight to bring out the highest points again. I eventually start adding a little bit of black into the holes just to make some parts of it look even deeper. I also added in some gray to my highlight color because I decided that my skin was looking a little too glowy and beautiful to be a zombie. It just wasn't screaming death to me. And then I'm topping it off, of course, with scab blood. I put in some freaky white zombie contacts and I wanted to be spewing some blood that looked old and rotten so I'm using chocolate syrup to do the job. Mmm, delicious. I look like a chocoholic drinking straight out of the bottle. Which by the way, I wouldn't recommend. I only did it because, well quite frankly, I was being lazy. It's sticky and it's awful but... It looks very zombie-esque, so it's worth it. Just watch your carpets because I learned the hard way. When it's all painted, fix your hair, put your precious flower crown back on, and you're ready to hit the town. So what'll it be? Glam Lana or Zombie Del Rey? Only you can decide. Or you can do both, just at different times.
that is all for my video where I tried to follow a Glam and Gore tutorial. Two tutorials to be exact. I'm honestly really proud of myself and the result. I think, to be completely honest, both my model and I were really surprised and impressed by the result. And we honestly actually thought that she looked a lot like Lana Del Rey. So we were both just jumping and squealing like crazy when uh, we were done because I thought that it went much better than I initially had expected it. And then for the zombie tutorial, it's, I mean, it's zombies. You can't go wrong with zombies. So that was really fun to make, even though we had to um, improvise a little bit, but I think it worked out pretty well in the end. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope you like it. Um, leave a like, subscribe for more shenanigans in the future, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.